Uh, this is the question. Are nunchucks a joke? Is it worth learning how to use a nunchuck? If you don't know what a nunchuck is, this is a nunchuck right here. All right. So this is kind of what one of the, the trademark weapons that Bruce Lee was known for. And um, basically the question is, is it worth learning? Is it good for self-defense? Um, the effectiveness of the weapon is extremely effective. I would say, um, and the only reason why it wouldn't be used for self-defense in a practical situation is because of the law. So um, this world is governed by the law and pretty much this weapon, this nunchuck is, is banned in like every single state. Um, and it goes so far as to having it banned in certain states that even allow people to carry firearms. Like they'll let you have a firearm, but they won't let you have a nunchuck. So that's how some of these laws are. Um, it's a very dangerous weapon, very effective. If there is no laws against any weapons, and I would, you know, if you would rank the effectiveness of each weapon, you know, obviously, I would say number one would be the gun. Um, number two, if you know how to use it, you know, correctly, then the bow and arrow. Number three, if you know how to use it correctly, tactically, I'd say maybe the bow staff. Number four um, would probably be the katana or a long sword. Or, you know, it could also be the long staff with the sword on the end that would actually be come before the bow staff because of the range and then would come the bow staff and then the sword like the katana or um, the Chinese broadsword and then after that I would say would probably go to the nunchuck and then after the nunchuck might be the basic stick or a baton or what the Filipinos would call the, a scream a stick and then would come the knives and things like, of that nature so like it is an effective weapon but the only reason why it's not practical is because it's not allowed by the law and it's very hard to conceal um, it's you know two big sticks and it's hard to carry um, and you know but the effectiveness of it, it can't be refuted. Um, you could test it out for yourself, but you could spar. Somebody has nunchucks, you know, some foam nunchucks, and somebody else has a foam stick, and then you can have them go at it, and you can see, like, how effective the nunchuck could be. Um, but if there was no laws against it, then I would carry it, like, everywhere I go. You know, but because there is a law and because it's clearly a weapon, it's not like carrying a knife around and just saying that it's not a weapon, it's something that you use for everyday practical uses such as cutting boxes and things like that, um, a useful tool. The nunchuck is nothing other than a weapon. So if the police wanted to arrest you for it, you know, they could easily arrest you for it because it is clearly a weapon. Um, even if you, you know, if you had a baseball bat in the trunk of your car, you could say that you use that to play baseball. But if you have this with you, you can't really say anything about it. It is a weapon. All right. So the only reason the practicality is not practical is because of the law. But the usefulness of it, it is very useful as a weapon. You know, as far as whether or not it's worth learning it, I think that if you're truly into the martial arts, that you should put effort into learning all weapons that you could get your hands on. So um, the bow staff, the nunchuck, the swords, the knives, um, the sai, the guns. Um, Somebody who's truly interested in the martial arts should be able to know how to operate each weapon in which to defend himself. Not necessarily 
as a way of self-defense at all cases, but just for the love of the martial arts, you just have that, that interest, you know? And as you train in the martial arts, you're going to decide for yourself, you know, which aspects of the martial arts you're gonna focus on first that's most important for you or that you think is the most practical. Um, like you might feel that hand-to-hand -hand combat is more important first to work on that and then later on you could decide to work on the kicks because you see that there's that's important as well and then later on you might decide to work on some ground fighting techniques because you see importance in that um, or you know locking techniques submission holds um, you know you know all sorts of you know joint locking techniques and things like that you know after you get in, involved in that then you might start to decide that it's important to learn some you know how to use a weapon and if you look at the law they pretty much decide what's allowed what's not the only reason why you know a sword like a broadsword Chinese broadsword is not efficient out there in the streets is because you're not allowed to carry that around if you were allowed to carry that around then that is a very deadly weapon, you know, and it could be very efficient and useful during certain situations. But because the law bans it, then you don't see anybody carrying them. And it's very hard to carry it and conceal it, so nobody's going to be re really carrying that type of weapon. And it's the same thing that goes with the nunchuck, but, you know, there, there are even some police officers in Chicago, there's, they're talking about potentially allowing police officers to carry nunchucks. You know, and, you know, in a way, even though it's an effective weapon, it's not easy, that easy to learn. It's not as easy to learn a nunchuck than it is to carry a baton, you know, or a taser, or even a gun. Um, learning the nunchuck takes more skill and more time in order to use it effectively. Um, so, it wouldn't really be practical for police officers because they don't really have the time to be learning the intricacies of this type of weapon. Um, it takes more skill and development, um, and which a lot of police officers just don't have that time or the motivation for that matter. Um, but that doesn't take away from the usefulness and the effectiveness of the weapon. You know, so you might, you know, you might prioritize what's important for you. You can look at the law and be like, okay, what's allowed it there out there in the streets? And if your state says, hey, you know, carrying a gun is allowed, then you might prioritize learning that weapon first. And then you, you, know, you, you find out what other weapons might be allowed. Um, but I would say most weapons are all banned, but a, a pocket knife might be allowed. You might be allowed to carry a pocket knife. So then you might learn how to use that as a way of self-defense in case something happens. But once you start going into the realm of illegal weapons, such as the sword or the nunchuck, then it takes away the practicality because now you, you're afraid of, you know, you're worried about getting um, arrested for possessing a weapon. Um, and now you got to worry about not just the person that might hurt you, but you also got to worry about the police officer that might arrest you for having that weapon that you're not supposed to have. But once again, that doesn't take away the, effect is, the effectiveness of it in a situation where you had to use it. it just, it's just that the law just trumped um, people's like idea of what is useful and when what's not. You know, like I said, if the law stepped out of the way and they allowed us to carry whatever weapon we wanted, then yes, the firearm would usually be the best weapon, the most effective of them all. But then there could also be there could also be people that might start carrying um, the bow and arrow because the bow and arrow is also a very effective weapon. 
And then there could be people that start carrying a bow staff around everywhere they go. People start carrying nunchucks everywhere they go. Um, but the law just basically banned all the weapons and then now martial artists, it's, it's, it's almost like practicing something that it's not just about using it as self-defense, but you're just practicing it because you truly have an interest in the martial arts and you want to learn everything there is out there to learn. You know, um, it just, like you're like an enthusiast. It's kind of like the cars, you know, like they have Porsches and Jaguars and, you know, these really fast cars out there like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and these cars could go over 200 miles per hour you know these cars go to 0 to 60 in like under 3 seconds but the speed limit out there is usually 30 miles per hour 35 miles per hour and then the highway is 60 miles per hour 65 miles per hour like there's nowhere in Chicago where you're allowed to drive that fast but yet there's still people out there that want these types of cars and want this type of speed and they they just value these these type of cars and this type of technology they want to save money to buy these nice things even though they may never be, be allowed to go over 200 miles per hour but they still they still have this strong interest in in these cars so it's the same thing with the martial arts like even though you know you may never be carrying around nunchucks with you or you never may carry a sword with you you ne may never carry a bow staff with you you know um, or these scream sticks you still have the interest in learning these weapons because you love the martial arts that much and you just want to be proficient in any, any type of weapon that, get, that you get your hands on. So then, if somebody challenges you in a sparring match, you know, hand to hand, you could beat them. Um, wrestling, you could beat them. Ground fighting, you could beat them. Um, kickboxing, you could beat them. They challenge you in a nunchuck battle, you beat them. They challenge you in a stick fight, you beat them. Bow staff fight, you beat them. A gun fight, you beat them. Um, a bow and arrow, you know, fight, you beat them. Basically, you just beat them in every single thing that that's a part of the martial arts, and even things that aren't a part of the martial arts, even just strength exercises. A pull-up contest, you beat them. A push-up contest, you beat them. Bench press, you beat them. It's like basically in martial arts, there's just so much to learn, and you prioritize what's important for you and everybody's different so I'm not going to say what's more important for you opposed to what's important for this next person like you have your own interests a lot of it is motivation you have all the time in the world you have your whole life to learn the martial arts so there's no rush you know you could learn one aspect of the martial arts and then a couple years later or ten years later you learn another aspect for me I've been practicing martial arts, you know, for over um, 28 years, and I just started to, to put more energy on working on, you know, learning the Psy, you know, and I'm trying to put more energy on working on developing better techniques with the bull staff. The nunchucks is just something that I'm very comfortable and confident in, and it's nothing to me, but there's other weapons that, that I need to get better at. Um, working, spending more energy on the Chinese broadsword. I gotta get better at that weapon. So there's other weapons that I need to work on as well. And it just basically diversifies the whole experience within your journey in the martial arts. So you're not just doing the same stuff over and over and over again. There's something new to learn. And with that newness, it just, it, it just sparks a whole new you know, level of motivation and interest in what you do. You know, and like I said, it is very similar to those cars. You know, most people are not gonna have those fancy sports cars out there. It's not practical for them, you know. Too much gas, it, t it eats up too much gas, the cars cost too much, you can't drive them in, in the winter, in the snow, 
you know, and they cost a fortune to fix. I mean, it's just very impractical, but yet there's people that still love those cars and they're gonna collect those cars and they're gonna save money to buy those cars. Same thing with the martial arts, you know, learning nunchucks might not be the most practical thing because out there on the streets, it's banned, but it doesn't mean that it's not important for some people to learn and that it's not something that is of value, you know? Um, because in the end of the day, if you really are concerned about self-defense, then just get the firearm and, you know, have the, the legal permission to carry and then use that as a way of self-defense. Essentially, all sorts of martial art techniques from hand-to-hand -hand combat to nunchucks to swords to staffs to um, sticks to whatever type of fighting method, it's all just unuseful, you know, when it comes to the firearm because of that technology. But it doesn't mean that there is no value in the martial arts and that there's no reason to learn and to improve, you know, and it's an art. And it's just similar to other arts where, you know, we got all these digital cameras and these cell phones that take pictures, but it doesn't mean that painting and drawing, that there's no reason to do it and that there's no value in that. But those have become an art form. And yeah, there's a small percentage of the population that appreciates that art form, but that small percentage is essentially what makes it very special. Just like the sports car one, once again. The reason why the sports cars are so are such high value is because there's just not so many of them out there. Not every day you're gonna see a Ferrari or a Lamborghini um, or even a Porsche. There's just not that many out there. Um, but that's exactly what adds value to it. And it's the same thing with the martial arts. Not a lot of people will know how to use a nunchuck. There's going to be a lot more people that know how to use a gun and a knife than they will know how to use a nunchuck. You know, but as far as the practicality of it is concerned, if you put somebody who's really good at the nunchuck against somebody that has a knife, he'll be able to beat the person with the knife because of the range involved with the longer weapon. Um, so it clearly is a useful weapon but it is the government that has um, made it illegal in which to take the practicality out of the weapon for our daily lives. So hopefully um, that video will get you to see a different perspective. Um, and it might not be now, but maybe years down the line you might get interested in learning the, the nunchuck you know, after you learn all the things that you wanted to learn first. Um, but the journey of the martial arts is a never-ending journey to improve and to learn. You know, so thank everybody for your support. You take care.